Welcome to episode 24 of what is probably going to be our most important podcast to date. Nice. That's a good little headline there. Absolutely. We will, however, before getting into the juicy, juicy stuff, talk about something both hilarious and sad. In the what's new? In the what's new. So let's head on to what's new. This is where we talk about what's new in China. And uh, what's new, Seamilk? What's new in China is, well, everyone is at home quarantine right now. Yes. A very big hobby amongst many people stuck in their houses is either consuming media like watching movies or playing video games. Okay, this uh, Animal Animal Crossing Homecoming, is it? It's now it's very... the hottest game right now. Yeah, yeah. So, as you can see here, I'll give you guys a little bit of time to digest this. This is a Hong Kong protest within the game. Now, as we know, the Hong Kong protests are still ongoing. I love that part. Yeah, that's... Uh... They're that's hitting Carrie, Carrie Lam's <laughs> Anyway, face. people are locked in their houses. Mm -hmm. They're playing games all the time. And the, the Hong Kong protesters said, you know what? We're creative folk. Let's take the protests online where we know that it is wildly popular right now in China. It's got a, a grave of Carrie Lam with yeah, that's, pictures. It's getting a little extreme. Yeah. But anyway, this caused a huge problem for China because they wanted people to be happy at home too. They uh, kind of relaxed the idea that people could play video games and a lot of people were playing Ring Fit and Animal Crossing when it yeah. dropped. Yeah. It's the most wholesome game in the world. It's Absolutely. a world building game. Yeah. And a lot of uh, Hong Kong people were getting in touch with people in mainland China over this game. Sure. So what do they do? They've banned uh, Animal Crossing in mainland China. You're not allowed to sell it anymore. Mm -hmm. And they've also now put forward a proposal to ban any online games where people can talk to foreigners. So look at it like this. I mean, you're talking about the most wholesome activity that could, again, we always say this, to promote international community. Mm. If China really wants to be a part of the international community, you got to let your citizens at least play games yeah. with people in other countries. Well, it's beyond their control. You see, I don't think they were expecting the Hong Kong protest uh, <laughs> stuff to appear in a game, especially like a kid's game. Right. Like, oh, it's going to piss some people off. It's probably not a kid's game but you know it's whatever it's yeah. a cutesy little chibi mm. game and you know they weren't expecting that and then they saw they saw this as like holy crap this is a big vacuum where mm. we do not have control over speech freedom of speech we have to lock down on this right you know? i wonder what chinese people think of this right now well i mean i when i told my wife that they banned that because she wants to get the game right mm. she was kind of surprise she's like why would they ban that it's ridiculous i mean but obviously it's got to do with freedom of speech mm. so any uncontrolled uh medium mm. in china has to be controlled by the government they need to be able to say you can't post this and if someone does post it they have to be able to punish that person mm. um and so they can't they they have no control over what international people say mm. somebody could say taiwan number one or you know like tiananmen square massacre or something and they can't stop that person from saying that right and then that sensitive information might actually come across the eyes and the ears of the Chinese citizens, which they try their best to keep in the dark. And so that's right. why they want to control it. I mean, it might look petty, but keep in mind when Kingdom Hearts came out and the promotional material, they actually airbrushed out Winnie the Pooh. They did. I mean, that's just the level we're talking about yeah, here. Yeah. But anyway, this led to a full ban, well, a bill, proposed bill mm -hmm. that will be on a municipal level yeah. that says, okay, Shanghai, Beijing, or wherever you are, you can dictate uh, whether people can play games where they talk to international communities or not. Mm -hmm. And if the bill goes through, and we're pretty sure it will, sure. it means that all online games where you play against a mainland Chinese person, they won't be able to communicate with you or play with you. Yeah. And By the way, yeah. some people are wondering where my hair went. Um, well, we had a little incident, you know, quarantine, can't go to the hairdresser. My wife got a really... Um, how, how do you say good value pair of clippers. good value cost eight dollars nice and for a reason um for a they razor. didn't work it felt like i was pulling my hair out one by one and so it messed up and we just had to shave it all off so yeah, keep that's... in mind uh, my wife did a pretty good job yeah she did but she didn't have eight dollar clippers no she didn't <laughs> okay. get what you pay for baldness yeah. Anyway, uh, let's let's continue. So I guess that's kind of what's new. Do you have anything else for what's new today? I don't believe we do. All right, let's answer a super chat. We'll head straight into the main event. Sure. All right. First off, we have oh, right down here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Kevin N. Good day, guys. Thank you. Uh, you're both doing a bloody good job of this. I'm considering joining Seamilk's Patreon. Uh, can you please explain your Patreon membership levels in more detail, especially the Hangouts one? Is it usually busy or intimate? Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Uh, Patreon, every day, every single day before work, I answer every uh, direct message that I get. That's a tradition I have. We have a good community going on there. And I post material. But uh, the other one that you're talking about, sometimes I do like a live chat thing. Uh, and only usually like 20 people go in there. So it's pretty intimate. Thank you. 
All right. Um, you know what? I, I realize there is another thing for what's new that we could jam in here. Okay. Wet markets. Sure. Because that's the, the main topic of this, by the way, is the racism and discrimination and xenophobia that's going on in especially southern China, but all of China right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought the wet markets thing is very important to talk about. Wet markets have reopened across China. Of course, mm-hmm. we all know that it's very likely that the the disease, sorry, the virus came from uh, a wet market in Wuhan. It's or was passed through it. Or passed through it. But the, the fact of the matter is other pandemics and other viruses have sprung up mm. from these wet markets. They're Stars. just like a breeding ground for, right. for viruses and diseases because of the unsanitary conditions. Mm-hmm. Now, there's been a lot of criticism around the world when it comes to these wet markets. I'm just going to roll some footage mm-hmm. that we've shot in the background. Um, but they've completely opened up again. Mm-hmm. And you've got people. The crazy thing is you, you see a trend of of influences online that are um, sympathetic to the Communist Party going online, trumpeting the values of wet markets. All within like a very short time Yeah, period. all within like a week. When they reopened it, they, in order to try and, oh, by the way, that says go roll. Mm. You that's know, literally meat. next door to where I used to live. Exactly. It's in Huizhou. I yeah. remember that. We went there before. Mm. Um, so dog meat and, and uh, lamb or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the thing is... Um, They've been trying their best to soften the blow because they knew that when they open up these wet markets, um, this is we shot in Jiangxi when mm. we went there together. It's just a normal street wet market, really. Um, then you see all the feathers and all that. But they knew that people would be like, what the actual hell? How can you open these when we, we pretty much are sure that the, the wet markets are the reason this thing spread so quickly? Mm. How can you open them again so quickly? So they went into full overdrive propaganda machine got all their influences, everyone that they could think of, even the WHO to a certain degree towed the line for mm. a couple of days where they were saying like, it's a it's necessity for China. It's so necessary for these wet markets to be open because it's a way of life. It's how people get their food. Without them, you know, society can't cope or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it is a huge part of Chinese society. We mm. all know that in the mornings, the, the especially the grandmas and grandpas, they go down to the Shichang, which means wet market, they buy the vegetables and fresh meat and fish, etc., and then they go and cook it, and they do it for that day. They don't keep leftovers. They don't keep stuff refrigerated. It's a daily cycle. Mm. Um, of course, in the West, we've adopted a more safe standard where we have supermarkets. And yeah, you'll get the people saying, oh, what about GMO and injected this and that. Guess what? This meat that goes to the, the wet markets is full of nong yao, as they call it. I see this Hormones, often. Hormones, growth stuff. Yeah. I see this often with mm. the very pro-CCP types. Yeah. What they'll say is that in the West, we're getting fed hormones and poison and pesticides and all this stuff. Yeah. I'd like... It, it's rife. Yeah. Here. It's it's huge in China. That's something people don't say. By the way, please pay attention to this clip that uh, Seamilk and I filmed in Jiangxi. This is super common. See what this guy is doing. In fact, I'll, I'll just rewind it just slightly. I'd like you to see what he's doing with the meat. And this is why it's also such a bad thing. See, he picks up that meat. Nah, I don't want that piece. Nah, screw that piece. Or right, how about this piece? Nah, that one's not good. Yeah, that one. I'll take that one. What about this? Nah, I don't want that one. He's like, actually, you know what? I don't want that piece. And he throws it back down. So that's what's going on here is you've got people picking up and mm. handling this stuff, throwing it back down. The next person comes along, picks up the same kind of meat, throws it around. You see how it's easy to transmit any kind of disease or any kind of virus person to person because they're all handling these like unsanitary bits of meat and Mm. stuff, okay? It's the reason why these things are such a bad idea. Mm. So, you know, the fact of the matter is they've opened all this stuff again and they're running just the same as they did before. You would expect they would at least try to put more regulations and stuff, but no. I've been sent footage from people, and you know we I can mean, go it, look. I mean, it also ties into the whole like they just they've banned all wild meat trade, wild animal trade, and then you go on on a uh, Hubei website that still has a marketplace open for rare animals. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, that's, so where's that's, the ban? China is all about face. Remember, it's right. all about saying we did this, but meanwhile not doing it at the mm. same time. You know, it's like it's like a kid. Telling his mom, I clean my room. It's the cleanest room in the world. Meanwhile, he didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. He just locks the door so you can't go in and see. You know, first the mom says, good job. And then she goes there. And she's like, what? Where, where is it? You know? <laughs> yeah, well, she can't get into it. She can't get in. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, this wet market thing, You when you start to see all this so-called positive coverage, it's very easy to see um, it's part of the propaganda tool because mm-hmm. they want to soften the blow. Mm-hmm. It does need to change. It's not a good system. It is medieval. It's... Mm-hmm. Um, it's disgusting if you've ever been to. We've 
We've had tons of videos where we've shown wet markets. We've been to wet markets a lot. Our families, they do shop at wet mm -hmm. markets. You know, it is part of the culture and all that kind of stuff. But it is also a big reason why these viruses and pandemics can uh, sort of appear out of nowhere. Yeah, and that's why the, you, know, you can have a wet market, but it needs to be hygienic. And nine times out of ten, they're not. Exactly. Uh, anyway, time for us to move on to... Do you want to do one more Super Chat before the main sure. thing? Yeah, that's Sorry, because I, I broke up the... The thing here. Zachary says, now it is safe uh, and you don't live in China anymore. Will you talk more about human rights and democracy? So many persecuted people on the mainland. I think that's predominantly what we talk about now, yeah, Zachary. Yeah, absolutely. Don't worry. Thank you. And Dion will do one more. No holds barred. Yeah. Uh, Melbourne Council voted to break ties with a China, Chinese sister city, kind of like Prague, right? Yeah. Uh, but are now voting again to reverse that decision because the Chinese High Commission complained. Of course, they will always complain and complain because they can in a Western democracy. You can complain and you can, um, you know, sort of put forth an idea and people will listen. But whereas in China, you try to complain, they won't, you, you can't even complain. There isn't no. even a way to complain. No. And if you do, uh, nothing will be done because you have no say. Correct. They do not care. Let's move on to our main uh, focus, which is very important today. It's Soft Power Hour, where we talk about how China is trying to change your minds through its wily little ways, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et um, now, this is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe you can explain what happened to our good friend Tedros the sellout. Teddy boy. Uh, Teddy boy over here. We know his, mis his wrongdoings within the WHO that actually caused this virus to spread. However, another big piece of the puzzle was the fact that Taiwan had warned the WHO multiple times. Yeah, in December already. In December, that they were dealing with a serious virus. And that there was human-to-human -human And that there was human-to-human transmission. Human transmission. Yeah. And then the WHO shunned them and said, no, you will never be a part of our organization. We mm -hmm. acknowledge the one-child po or China po policy, right? Yeah. yeah. So they weren't allowed to basically spread very, very in important information with the world because yeah. the world tends to listen to the WHO being a global Not anymore, I hope. No. So anyway, what happened was Taiwan criti publicly criticized Tedros and the WHO for not yeah. allowing them yeah. to be part of it. Yeah. And Tedros replied that Taiwan is trying to politicize the event. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get in the way of Chinese sovereignty and that they, they were being, being very racist. racist against him. And that... He's literally talking about Chinese people. We're not oh. talking about, you know, a different race or ethnicity of people. Yeah. We're talking about Taiwanese people who are Chinese. So you yeah. can't use that. Yeah, that's the thing that a lot of people don't seem to understand is that, you know, the people of Taiwan are Chinese. The people in mainland China are Chinese too, mm. ethnically. Mm. They look the same. They speak the same language. They have the same roots of culture. I wouldn't say they're the same culture anymore. No. Same with Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So when you hear someone say that Hong Kongers are being racist towards mainland Chinese people, that's the stupidest thing I've ever no. heard. You can say it's like, like saying, or something. Yeah, you could say um, xenophobic. Yeah. You yeah, know, you yeah. could say nationalists yeah. or something, but you can't say racist because they are of the same race. Right. Exactly the you same race. You can't use that. And so Tedros screwed up here big time. Yeah. Anyway, this is my question to Mr. Tedros. If you think Taiwan is racist, how about you go to Guangzhou and try to go to McDonald's? What's going to happen? I'll show you what's going to happen. Take a look. And if you haven't seen this already, because I posted this ages ago and it's been around a while now. This is a black guy. I'll take us out of the picture. Um, went into McDonald's in Guangzhou. We actually know exactly which McDonald's this is. Um, and what does it say on that notice? Maybe you can read it. We've been informed that from now on, black people are not allowed to enter the restaurant. For the sake of your health, consciously notify the local police for medical isolation. Please understand the inconvenience cost. Okay, now, this is important for a number of reasons. Number one, it's incredibly racist. Obviously. I never thought in my entire lifetime that I would see apartheid come back, hmm. where it's like Chinese-only zones. Right. Because it, it's not only black people. It's all foreigners are being right. discriminated against. But specifically right now, there's been this thing about black people. Right. Look at this. Black people are not allowed to enter the restaurant. No blacks allowed. This mm. is a thing, right? And what's even more important is they say, um, notify the local police for medical isolation. So you can see that there's an official line to this. Yeah. Okay? You have to call the police and you have to be isolated because you're black. Mm. Okay, and we're going to see why that's important later on. But, you know, when I posted this on my Instagram, some bellends or some knob gobbler was saying, listen, okay, you just laminated this thing and walked into McDonald's to try and trick us to saying that's what Chinese are saying. No, first of all, um, you can see the guy's hand. He's, he's black, or is he? Yeah, he's black. Very light-skinned black. Um, and 
you can see that the notice is held by the staff wearing the McDonald's stuff. It's the staff handed that to him because they can't speak English, basically to say, bugger off, you're black. Right. And the thing, I want to make a very clear distinction here, why yeah. this is so important. We're going to get into this a lot, but Chinese state, the state has said that they do not allow this. This is illegal, in fact, right? Yeah, that's what they say. But people are probably watching this one and be like, what a horrible lady to not allow this. This is not her fault. This no, is from the top. It's from the top. And we're going to get into that a lot in this. Um, okay, so Mr. Tedros, if you walked into that McDonald's, do you think that lady is going to recognize you as being the, the WHO shill of China? No. <laughs> She's going to be like, oh, look, a black man. Better show him this sign to say, you know, black people aren't allowed. That's racism. That is racism. That's specifically because of someone's race. And we're going to get into this because it really is racism. Very quickly, you tie it back to the whole when there was flight bans from China. It doesn't yeah. matter if you were Chinese, white, black. If you flew from China, you weren't allowed to come in. Right? Yeah. It has nothing to do with race. Yeah. This is saying black. Yeah. You are black. You can't yeah. come in. Exactly. It doesn't matter what nationality. So uh, here's actually a, a, a post from a guy trying to get into McDonald's, a black guy. I wasn't allowed to eat at McDonald's in Crown Plaza, uh, Taljin area, close to the Garden Hotel. I've been in Guangzhou since last October 2019. No travel history to infected countries or areas. And recently I have done the COVID-19 test and the results was negative. I don't know what to think anymore. My black friend has been tested three times. He's mm -hmm. been in China the entire time. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, yeah, I got a good story, which is coming up. Um, now, listen, that specific McDonald's, I've been to it myself, and everybody knows the Garden Hotel mm. is right there in smack dab in the center where it's like downtown. International. Um, there, there's that pub, what's it called again? Elephant Castle mm. is over there. It's a very well-known location. Lots of foreigners go there. So it's not like out in the middle of nowhere. No, 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 no. no. It's kind of like downtown LA or right. Times Square or something. Uh -huh. It's like the happening place. And, you know, the fact that they're rejecting black people from a very, you know, open international area like that means that it's all over. Um, anyway, let us continue. Well, the stuff makes me angry, you know. You, you well, yeah. Okay, now this is another black guy walking into a small, you get these little uh, kind of places where they sell things. We're going to play it. You guys can listen to the audio, then we'll translate for you. My things here. Why go and buy? Why go and buy? Okay. So do you want to do the quick? So he said he wants to buy stuff, and then she said foreigners. He said. He said yeah. Foreigners can't buy, and then he said he repeated back. Oh, foreigners can't buy, and she said no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, he. Not she. she, she yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> he. She. Um, it's the same so, in Chinese. Ta, ta. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, because he said, Bumai, 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 right. which means I'm not going to sell. I'm not going to sell. And he's like, why? You're not going to sell to foreigners? He's like, yes, not going to sell to foreigners. Mm. This has been a thing where um, black people, Africans, in Guangzhou have been denied access to very basic things. Mm. Restaurants, hotels. We're going to tell you why, but uh, it, it's quite bad. And we've had, I'm sure you've all seen the videos already. I shared some in my video last mm -hmm. week of Africans that are forced to sleep on the streets, mm -hmm. who are kicked out of hotels, they were forcefully evicted. Um, anyway. Oh, it's, uh, it's, 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 there's some confusion in the well, chat. They said, that's not McDonald's. No, that's not no, McDonald's. That, we're that showing one other wasn't. examples. This, this yeah. is just a few. This is in Guangzhou, the southern city. Bear in mind, Guangzhou, also, it, it was known as Canton back mm. in the day. It is the capital of Guangdong province. Mm -hmm. Guangdong province is the richest province in China. It's where all the iPhones are made. That's where all the industry is. Mm. That's where we used to live. Mm. Um, I lived in Shenzhen, which is the second biggest city. And Guangzhou is one of the four first tier cities of China. It's an incredibly important mm. city. So it's not in the middle of nowhere. Guangzhou is kind of like New York or LA or mm. San Francisco. Or DC. <laughs> yeah, or DC. It's one of those, right? It's top of the pops. So this is what's happening in like the, this big sort of capital city of the province. Mm. Uh, this is another guy in Guangzhou, a black guy trying to walk into a, a shop that sells handbags and shoes and stuff. Right. Mm? Yo. Yeah. Huh? So yeah, 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 yeah. Don't want, don't want, don't want. Like basically, you're not allowed to come in here because you're a foreigner, right? If they're wondering, uh, there's a lot of uh, Africans in Guangzhou that yeah. do uh, textile trading. So they buy shoes and things and pants to send back to Africa. Absolutely. So they can't do their work. Well, it's the largest African community in China. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, here's the thing that's really ticking me off, okay, is that there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, but they're all illegal or there's a lot of illegals and so that's why they should be, you know, kicked out and stuff. That's not the case because... 
both you and I personally know a lot of Africans. I'm African myself, South African, so I know a lot of Africans there. Mm -hmm. And they're legal, and they're still being evicted by their landlords and kicked out and discriminated against. That's my friend from Ghana. Literally, he hasn't left. Yeah. Yet he's getting taken away from his family, put into a quarantine hotel at his expense. Yeah. And he can't leave. He didn't leave. He's got a visa. Let, let's be real here for a minute, okay, before we continue with this, because we've got a lot to talk about. But there are specifically the same people that have been going on about how good the wet markets are. There's like a, a group of useful idiots. Mm. They have all put out videos saying, oh, it's bad that what's happening to the black people, but most of them are illegal anyway, or they've overstayed their visas, or they're not, you know, complying with the, That's the party quarantine, well. you know, rules and all that kind of mm. crap. These same people are the same people that as soon as Trump or anyone says anything about illegal Mexicans or illegal anything else, they'll jump down their throat and they will completely condemn anything to do with that. But mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's OK to condemn an entire race and an entire group of people because there are some illegals, you know, um, the it, hypocrisy it makes, is it makes real. me sick. It's so hypocritical. You know what I mean? Because as long as China does it, it's okay. But if uh, the West does it, it's not okay. That's the thing, though. If the CCP is going to say that the criticism of our government is racist, yeah, you can't go and do this. You can't just say ban all black people and harass Ab them. Absolutely. Um, here's another little WeChat group. Look, we've got hundreds of these, and mm. we don't have all day, so we just picked sure. a few. Um, someone here said, well, I got stopped and denied entry to the metro today in Panyu. Panyu is in the far flung outskirts of Guangzhou. It's mm. like another little sub sub area. Um, and there, a bad place, yeah, though. there are a bunch of factories and stuff out there. We used to go through there all the time. Yeah. Um, and say, so it's starting to affect other foreigners as well, because this guy, Niklaus, mm. is not um, African. Mm. He's not black. And so uh, he said, it's not as bad as what the African community is dealing with at the moment. Not only him. Tomorrow in my video, I have, because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're just sharing crap on the news. I reached out to some of my friends. I've mm -hmm. got actual video of my friends and people that we both know as mm -hmm. well sent me video of themselves being discriminated against. Right. And that'll be on my channel tomorrow. Right. Anyway, let's continue. It's bad for all foreigners, but Africans specifically. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. Yeah, we went through this. Mm -hmm. Now, it's kind of important. Uh, yeah, you, you're going to talk about the Global Times, our favorite thing. Our favorite news that. outlet, the Global Times, a state mouthpiece in English for the CCP. Yeah, they were the one of the first outlets to jump on this and say there is absolutely no racism. I'm not going to read this. I will give you the gist by saying mm -hmm. they blamed this on the U.S. because people in America, specifically black people, were yeah. quite outraged to see their you know people of their same skin color be oppressed in China. Yeah. Like this, so blatantly put out onto the street, yeah. right? Kicked out of their homes, babies in hand, no food, right? Yeah. They got angry and then the Global Times said, oh, it's just America's fault. They're making this an issue and it doesn't actually exist. There is no discrimination here. Look at the aid that we do for Africa. And they always play this huge role in saying, we took Africa out of poverty. We built roads there. We did this and this and this. So we're, how Africans are treated in China is not only a domestic issue, it's justified and nothing bad happened. Yeah, such bullshit. Anyway, um, let's, let's continue. If you're wondering why all this foreign, um, anti-foreigner sentiments going on, it's because it's the underlying narrative of mm. the Chinese government. Not only are rumors being allowed to spread online about, oh, Africans are massive carriers of, of the disease. That's what sparked this all off, mm. by the way. A bunch of stupid rumors online, right. which were let to just grow out of control. And also the, the government itself publishing numbers that, oh, look, it's the um, imported cases now. Look, there have been five Africans who traveled around that, you know, were infected. Um, but China has that anti convenient anti rumor law, but they don't enact it when it needs to be enacted. Yeah. I would like you to pay attention. This, by the way, is in Beijing, the capital of China. This is uh, San Lituan, Soho area. Um, and this is someone just captured this with the webcam, sorry, the dash, dash cam, cam of their car. This is basically saying if you um, break any of the quarantine laws, you're going to get locked up. This is hmm. the gist of it, right? But look who gets locked up. It's ridiculous. Let's take a closer look at what this guy looks like. Um, he is a foreigner. Mm -hmm. So who's breaking the quarantine laws? A foreigner. He's clearly a foreigner. He's got brown hair. He's got a beard. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, you've got to take a, a, a look at the rest of this video because they show the presenter who's like giving all the laws and stuff is clearly Chinese. 
So it's foreigners that are doing the bad stuff. Foreigners are going to get locked up. See, there's a, you can see he's clearly Chinese. If you're wondering where their animosity is coming from, like you said, all foreigners are dealing with this right yeah, now. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. in every level of propaganda in, in China right now. It's, they are basically saying, look, it's foreigners. Okay, now here's, <laughs> here's a ridiculous thing. CGTN, of course, is the official mouthpiece of the Chinese Communist We always have to Party. tell you guys this. If you see different brands of Chinese media, they're all the same thing. Yeah. Um, so what is the tweet from them? The Chinese foreign ministry denied instances of discrimination against Africans in the southern Chinese city of Guangzhou and called U.S. accusations of mistreatment of Africans in the city an attempt to harm Beijing's relationship, uh, relations with African nations. Okay, can we just rewind a little bit? No blacks allowed? I mean, look. That's just one instance. Yeah, I, I actually want to show you a picture here, okay? Sure. This is from the owner of uh, the pizza factory, mm -hmm. which, by the way, in Guangdong is the only really good pizza, pizza to be honest. Yeah. I don't know if you've tried them. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, okay. We ate there together. Oh, yeah, that's Shenzhen. right. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Okay. The pizza factory, the owner said, in China's recent efforts to save face and rewrite the script of COVID-19, framing itself as the hero of the foreign bug, local businesses are stuck between a rock and a hard place. In Guangzhou, Yuexiu, uh, it's Yeshu and Haiju districts. Restaurants are being visited by local authorities and instructed to refuse dine-in service to foreigners, especially black people. Yes, that's a direct quote. But wait, no, the government didn't do this. No, it's local authorities. They are the government. It's, it's the dumbest thing ever. It's kind of like saying the police in, in Ohio, you know, mm. said no blacks allowed. And then they're like, someone says, well, the U.S. government's racist. Like, no, that's not the U.S. government. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? they're not part of that. They're not part of the government. You know. Anyway, on one hand, our business operates as a guest in China and has always tried our best to comply with local policy. On the other hand, I come from a long line of teachers, parents, and previous bosses that all believed very strongly in racial equality. Therefore, we are politely responding for the local authorities to go fuck themselves. <laughs> <laughs> we just won't operate... Anywhere in which our business is encouraged to discriminate. Uh, if we get shut down for it, you know, they don't care. Principles before profits. And this is the pizza factory Guangzhou and Shenzhen, the owner. Of yeah, the so this factory. guy was contacted. Yeah. And this is this is flies in the face of the allegations mm -hmm. from state media that keep saying, no, we never did that. We honor our African brothers and sisters. We would yeah. never make a directive like that. Sorry. Yeah. Well, this is just one of many. Yeah. Because... There's actual official tweets from like rest, uh, sorry, hotel chains mm -hmm. saying that the authorities told them they're not allowed to let foreigners stay. KTVs um, as well. The people that are coming to the doors of Africans mm -hmm. to force them into quarantine mm -hmm. now are police. They are government. Mm -hmm. It's not who who is the one giving the directive. If police turn up at your door to forcefully quarantine Did they come up you that themselves um are the police not part of the government yeah, is it not it's, part it's of the authorities group. is it a yeah splinter cell of vigilante police i don't think so no here's where it gets interesting guys and i want you to pay very close attention to anyone out there my friend a good friend of mine who i grew up with together he's actually the reason or well, i'm the reason he's in china i met him when i was about 12 or 13 years old and when I moved to China about a year and a half after I'd been there, I convinced him to come and, you know, come to China. I helped him get a job, helped him get settled, all this kind of stuff. He's a white South African just like me. He was forced into mandatory quarantine because he has an African passport, not in Guangzhou, but in Zhuhai. I know another group of South Africans in Zhongshan who have also been forced into quarantine. Dongguan. Dongguan, my friends in Dongguan. Yeah. This is literally the whole of the Guangdong province. They suddenly say, Africans are bad. Ban all Africans. So they say no black people because they can't really distinguish between, you know, white and black South Africans. You know, they just think all Africans are black. But anyone with an African nationality had to be forced into quarantine mm. all of a sudden. Now, my friend, and this is, you'll see tomorrow, I'm going to actually show you footage that he shot of them coming to fetch him and put him into quarantine. Yeah, not only has he not left China since August, but he's stayed in his apartment this entire time. He hasn't left, okay? He went through the mandatory quarantine. He was then forcefully tested for the COVID-19. And they came to his door two weeks ago, stuck the swab down his throat and whatever, did the whole thing. He came back negative. He has the green QR code. He is 100% above board. And yet... 
the local authorities, because he's African, came to his door and forced him into quarantine. Mm. So it doesn't matter what nation no. in Africa you're from. If you're African, you are now forced into quarantine. You are now discriminated against. Do you understand just how ridiculous this is? It's literally like if in the USA, let's just say some Thai people, um, mm. I don't know, did something bad. Mm. So the USA says, okay, all Asians need to be rounded up. Doesn't matter if you're Korean, mm. you know, you could be Japanese, you could be Chinese. Only round it up. We're going to go to your door yeah. and we're going to take you out of your home. Yeah. It doesn't matter what kind of Asian, but if you're Asian, fuck you. Right. That's what they've done to Africans in right. Guangdong. Every single African nation, Nigeria. What does Nigeria have to do with Ghana? What does Ghana have to do with South Africa? What the hell? These are different countries, different nations, oh, they thousands certainly don't of think miles that. apart. They certainly don't think that. It goes further than that. Why grind foreigner? Every foreigner is the same. Yeah. You know? So why is it that they can try and pretend like this discrimination is not going on? My Canadian friends, my American friends, they didn't get forced into quarantine. Mm. Only my African friends. So back to what we were saying, this bullshit that this... Chinese government is trying to say about, oh, there is no discrimination, can go take a hike. I have proof. You're going to see it in my video tomorrow. And, you, well, you've seen it now anyway. Mm -hmm. You didn't see in the McDonald's that, uh, like, no Nigerians allowed or, no. or no, I don't know, Germans allowed. It's like, no blacks allowed, no black people allowed. You, you know can't what I mean? do that anyway. You know yeah. what I mean? Anyone who tries to support this and make excuses for this, by the way. You're complicit. Yeah. Um, and you better ask yourself a question. Um, where did you stand on, on the whole topic of apartheid? Back in the 80s, you know, when everyone was saying abolish apartheid. I know lots of people who could try and justify why apartheid was there in the first place, but you cannot justify it. You cannot justify taking away a person's dignity and just freedoms of movements and their rights to enter a bloody restaurant based on the color of their skin. There is no defense for that. You can say, oh, there's some illegal Africans in Guangzhou. You can say some of them didn't, uh, you know, go by the um, quarantine rules. But to deny people entry into businesses and uh, to evict them based on the color of their skin and stuff means that you are a staunch supporter of apartheid in South Africa. And for a very clear example from the American perspective, it means you didn't support the civil rights movement. So yeah. what you're saying is you support China's authoritative racism, state-sanctioned racism over the civil rights movement in the West that gave equality to every person of every color. Yeah. You don't agree with it. Yeah, absolutely. You want people to be separated. Yeah, it's really, really annoying. Okay, now, this is, uh, this is where things get interesting, okay? Now, all of this footage has come up. People know that China is being racist. And it's a government thing. It's a provincial thing. Mm. It's the whole of Guangdong province that they're being racist towards Africans. And there's no way that you can try and pretend that this is not a thing that's happening. Because the, the no. evidence is just, you know, it's overwhelming. So... All of a sudden, after this, this, this stuff kind of got out, they realized, you know, we're going to have to do some, some uh, you know, quality control or some damage control, I should say. So I'm going to show you a clip that was aired on TV. You know, the interesting thing about these clips is you always see someone recording them with their phone because they only get shown in China. You mm. know what I mean? And yeah, they're not put a lot of times not posted. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's play this little clip for everyone to uh, listen to. Just hang on, we'll wait for it to pop up. Sorry, our system takes a little while to reconfigure itself. Okay, let's go press conference today draws very much attention because uh, recently there are some sayings spreading on the social media saying that some Africans are being treated very badly or even being discriminated uh, in Guangzhou. Okay, I, I just wanted to say, you know, the way she said that is recently there have been some sayings on social media that, you know, some Africans, so she's denying it, mm. basically. Oh, no, this is just some, some nonsense. People are talking A couple shit. of sayings. Yeah. yeah, it's not sayings. Anyway, let's get back to it. So uh, the Guangzhou official today at the press conference responded to this issue by saying that Guangzhou treats all foreigners equally. For more of this, now let's take a listen. We treat all people equally, oppose any differentiated practices, and have zero tolerance for discriminatory words and actions. This is the. This is absolute nonsense, okay? Absolute nonsense that they can go on and say that there's no discrimination against uh, black people. Because not only are we seeing the local authorities going into businesses 
and saying no dine-in for foreigners, but especially black people. But we're seeing tons of businesses, tons of, you know, restaurants and stuff putting up signs saying no black people allowed. Mm. McDonald's for crying out loud. Mm. Now that McDonald's put out a statement, by the way. They shut down for half a day to give sensitivity training to their staff or whatever and said that anyone who has their correct codes is allowed. But that's McDonald's. They obviously have to reply because they're a big multinational corporation. But nobody got fired. Nobody got like into trouble for that. They just had to undergo some sensitivity training. All the other... That's an official company. The thing is, there's no independent journalism in China, so they can't look into the smaller cases and report it back. Yeah, not only that, those smaller places, they can just continue doing what they do. And there's no oversight and there's no one that's going to, you know, um, answer to that. But what I'm trying to say is that this this is such a bold-faced lie. And this is what China does. You can see it now for yourself. You've just seen it. That official goes on and says, we do not discriminate. We treat all foreigners exactly the same. While at the same time, the police and local authorities are going to businesses telling them not to serve black people, not to serve foreigners. They're going to um, communities like gardens to say, report if you see especially black people coming in. They are doing this stuff and at the same, with one hand and with the other hand, they're coming up and saying, no, we're not doing anything. This is what the Chinese government does and they get away with it. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? 一边说真是一边说谎. Exactly. <laughs> uh, use a Chinese saying against them. Let's get back to where we were. Um, now, here's something kind of interesting. Can you bring up our, our notes there? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is uh, anonymized aggregated data via the WeChat API. This person didn't want to be named, but he is yeah, quite um, adept at this kind of stuff. Exactly. Very interesting. Now, I want you to take a look. Th- this is basically, um, we, we have a... a a, a friend who went and did this mm. aggregating of, of certain terms being mm. used in WeChat. Now, the first term you're seeing here, the graph of, is Heigui. That's the N-word. Yeah. Heigui is the Chinese N-word. Okay, there's no other way to put it. It's not polite. It's not funny. It's not anything mm. like that. If you call someone a Heigui, it's like in America going up to someone and calling them the N-word. It's exactly the same. And now we can see the different spikes, and they co- correlate to different events. Maybe you can read the different events. Sure. Uh, so I, I just want to quickly explain. This sure. is how often the word has been used with typing, not voice yeah. chat, but typing in WeChat, Yeah. Uh, which is interesting data. On uh, March 2nd, foreigner residence proposal. So that was basically when the Chinese government decided to cut ties with like Western nations, but promote Latin nations, African nations, all this kind sure. of stuff and get talent to come into China. Yeah. China went nuts. They did not want that. They yeah. went, it was, there was like xenophobic, racist explosions yeah, it was, all over the way. It was insane. So you can see the the N word, yeah. for lack of better words, was used more yeah. on this day. March 27th was the foreigner entry ban. Yeah. This one probably ties more into the other data that we have. Yeah, let's um, see over there. Mm-hmm. Um, on April 2nd, the MOFA spokesperson commenting on foreigners disrupting epidemic prevention. Mm-hmm. And then April 6th, there was a rumors about black people in Guangzhou. Okay, so that's Heigui. Now, we've mm. also got Hei Rin. That you just can see, black people. Yeah, Hei Rin is, that's, that's okay. That's mm. like saying a, a Byron is a white person, right. a Hei Rin is a black right. person. You can see it correlates yeah. um, quite a bit here if you take a look at the, the, the stats here. Um, but Heigui being the N-word is, is seriously being used a lot. And that is just up, straight up racism. There's no way to defend that, no. you know. Um, and we're going to look at a couple of uh, instances of it being used. Um, we also have, this by the same metric, uh, Lao Wai, which That's means... My YouTube name. Yeah, foreigner. Which also correlates. And mm-hmm. Lao Wai gets, gets a lot more. But, you know, Lao Wai is not that... It's not discriminatory. It's no. just like Lao Wai is like saying foreigner. Right. Uh, Wai Guoren is properly saying foreigner. And this also correlates. The fact of the matter is we've got all the numbers and you can see that the, these outbursts of racism have been, um, you know, correlating with these events, like you said. Right. Um, let's move on to the next part. So what happened? When the government realized that they couldn't keep a lid on this, just like with the coronavirus, just like with everything else that they failed to suppress, now they're going to damage control. They are the ones that went out and told everyone, don't serve black people. They are the ones that went out and forced all Africans to go into mandatory quarantine. And it is a thing. It's not some bullshit, because why would my friend in Zhuhai and my friends in Zhongshan and all over the province, not in one city, not in Guangzhou, be forced by local police to go into quarantine? Why would that happen? You know, unless it was a 
provincial-wide directive by the government. Correct. And just because they're African. And at the same time, my friends who are not African living in the same cities did not get that Correct. That order. They did not get put into to quarantine. It's Africans are being discriminated against. So what do they do? They go on their lame ass PR stuff. Maybe you can explain to the viewers who are listening, the listeners at home, what's going on in this. So as you can see in this clip, we have hazmat uh, Chinese people donating stuff. First, they're bringing food. Um, and then they're also giving them flowers for the PR stunt. So the whole camera crew is there from the Guangzhou TV network. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff China does all the time. After stuff, they've failed so hard to stop something. So they've already been caught in a lie. Look at the flowers, right? Yeah. That's what they need right now in their forced quarantine. Oh, thank you for the tulip. Yeah. Appreciate it. I think it's a rose. A rose, whatever. This is the kind of stuff that happens. They put them up to these PR stunts because they've already been caught in their lie, right? Yeah. Now they have to put the Band-Aid on it. You know, that's that's the thing. We'll just leave that running in the background. Um, actually not. Um <laughs> That's the thing that's ridiculous is a, the, a lot of Africans were on the street and unable to buy food. Like you saw earlier, shops were refusing to sell them anything. Mm -hmm. So now I also need to bring some of these uh, uh, the, the more positive stories into mm -hmm. this. There are volunteers, people that contacted me who are going out there to help the Africans on mm -hmm. the street. Chinese people. Yes. Who are like, you know what? What the hell's going on here? Why? Are you know why is our country doing this? And you're going to get bleeding hearts everywhere. And like you know, thank thank goodness for bleeding hearts because they're great and I, I I like them a lot. But they went out there bringing food, bringing water to help the people in need, which mm. is incredibly important to see that there's a little bit of balance to this. But the fact of the matter is, you had people on the street who could not get food. Okay, you had like you said, mothers walking with their children because they've been evicted. You have people, and this is the most stupid, ridiculous thing living in the same apartment black man or a black woman with a chinese or a white husband or whatever the local authorities would come in and evict the black person you have to go into quarantine you have to leave the white person or the chinese person no that's okay you can just stay in your home no problem even though you're the bloody husband or the wife obviously you're having intimate contact contact with this black person so if there was a chance this person had the virus so would you but they're like no you're chinese you're good you yep. know, that kind yep. of shit. Yep. And we're seeing it all the time. When couples go to restaurants, we see it all the time where they're like, oh, Chinese person can go in. Sorry, you're black. You're not allowed in. You're white. You're not allowed in. It's absolute blatant in your face racism and xenophobia on display for the entire world to see. And yet they continue to deny it all the time. Oh, it makes me mad. Sorry. Uh, I thought we'd, we'd uh, gotten rid of apartheid, like I said. Not in China. No. Um... You, you know, another thing you can notice is take a look, the the kind of headlines that they've put here in the, the news report that where the guy said, oh, we don't discriminate. It says, the African evicted from hotel was staying in Guangzhou illegally. I think that's a typo where they were saying the Africans evicted from mm -hmm. hotels because you can't book into a hotel unless you have your passport and a valid visa and, visa a valid visa. and so that's bullshit. entry state. So it's, it is bullshit. And also, I know... African people who were evicted from their hotels who are 100% legit. Yes, my friend is 100% legit. 100%. So there's not... There, this is a damn excuse that they're trying yeah. to use. You know, oh, they're just illegals. That's why they're on the streets. Well, you know what? If they're illegals, surely they should have been rounded up by the police and taken for deportation or whatever, not just left to roam the streets and sleep on the corner. Um, here's another thing, guys. That's super important. My friend that was taken into quarantine... They confiscated his passport. They took his passport away. So not only did they come and put him into quarantine, but they took his passport away. I'm pretty sure that's illegal anywhere else in the world, or at least it's against... It's like entrapment. Yeah, I mean, the American government doesn't allow you to give your passport to a foreign body. Yeah. Right? Well, they took his passport away, so he's stuck in quarantine without a passport. Mm -hmm. You know? That's what they're doing to Africans. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, back to it. <laughs> Let's see what we got else lined up in our little um, medley of nonsense. Okay, I want to explain this one. Okay, please do. So if you open up TikTok or any sort of uh, social media app that is owned by China, you'll see another big part of this cover-up. And this is after the flower story. After this all blew up and everyone around the world got really mad. Africans, Americans, any Westerner really with, a, with logic, yeah. got really angry at China's response to this. 
the Chinese government realize how important their international relations are with the Belt and Road Initiative, all their investments and their diamond mines, gold mines, oil, all that stuff, lumber. Yeah. They don't want to piss off people in Africa, right? So you have tons of this soft power stuff. They're rounding up Chinese people saying, Africa, be strong. Like, we're, we're really good friends. Let's roll that a little bit. We will in a sec. There's other, one other thing I think they realized mm. is you can be racist and xenophobic to whitey mm. and get away with it. That's, they've learned the playbook. When mm. you look at the, the Western media, it doesn't matter. You can call me a, a white piece of shit. You can say whatever you want to me. White pig. I'm just, yeah, a white pig. And get away with it. No one's gonna get no one's gonna get upset about that, you know. But you cannot be racist towards black people. Yeah, and they're realizing if you are that. racist towards black people in the West or in anywhere, it's just being racist towards anyone is bad. But you you know, everybody knows in the Western media, if you do that you're screwed. And I think they realized that they crossed the line mm. when they started to, you know, put out no blacks allowed, let's target black people, not because of the nationality or anything, but because of the color of their skin. You know, I think they realize that the Western world and, of course, Africa is not going to stand for that. No. They, they'll stand for whitey taking shit, but sure. they're not going to stand for that. So they went into massive overdrive. And look at this. Like you said, this is what uh, they went. They rounded up all these little cutesy guys to do this stuff. May the Lord bless Africa. Africa be strong. Africa be strong. African refueling. The Lord Jesus God's Africa, be strong. God bless you. Africa, be strong. 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 Okay, so um, how unbelievable <laughs> cringe bullshit was that? It'd be nice to think that some of those people were being genuine. Could you hear the script reading? And yeah. it comes right after they got so much egg on their face. Yeah. And instead of the government coming out and say, making a statement saying, yeah, we effed up. Yeah. We'll be better next time. We're new at this, right? Mm -hmm. They say, no, we didn't do it. And then they get their plebs on the street to go do their dirty work for them. Absolutely, because they could never take responsibility. No. It's such absolute nonsense. Now, racism in China, spe specifically towards black people, is something that has been there from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And I know this because I'm African, okay? And I've told this before, but every time I would introduce myself to anyone in China, and they would ask me, Nishinali Rena, where are you from? I'd be like, Washington Fei Ren, I'm South African. They're like, Don't you need Busha Hei Ren? You know, they're like, Wow, you're not black. And I have to explain to them, Africa is not just black people, you know? Another thing is, you see, it's Africa be strong, Africa be strong. They don't see Africa as having different countries. They see Africa as a country. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a one it's solid one thing. Unit. I'm telling you what, there's a huge difference between Egypt and the Congo, <laughs> right. okay? Or South Africa and Morocco. Sierra Leone or Ethiopia, <laughs> Right. you know? Seriously. But they don't understand that. They just think it's one place. Oh, so Africans have the, the virus. They come mm. from that one country called Africa. Mm. Anyway. I thought we'd show just a couple of things that have, you know, happened in the past. Let's have a quick look here. This is from 2016, I believe, where they had an art exhibition, you know, to show Africans next to, you know, monkeys and stuff. Well, like, the explanation of the exhibit was look at how this is the missing link. Look at how closely they resemble animals. Yeah. That's literally what the exhibit was in China. Yeah. I mean, it's a it beggar's belief to think that there's this kind of thing. Got ape hands holding... You know, and then like a, a black person's hand over there, you got a, a, a black child and a chimpanzee and you've got like a black man and a lion and then another black man and a baboon. Hmm. You know what I mean? Next to each other, like, look how similar they look, you know? 
Um, and this is like an art exhibition. Let's celebrate it. Yeah, of course. This is a, just fantastic. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, you get the idea of this one. It was just disgusting. It did. They did pick up a lot of crap for mm. that, but only way later after these oh, videos. Oh, they didn't learn their mistake. No, everybody's there, really enjoying it, you know, and having a good time looking at this, you know, what's going on. Um, anyway, let's take a look at some other instances here. I just want the whole point of showing this crap is to show that it's it's just a part of Chinese society and it's not frowned upon. It's just no, accepted no. as yeah. being kind of normal to be racist. To okay? the point where they literally did a blackface thing for the New Year's Gala, which I covered on my channel. Yeah, I mean, the New Year's Gala... That's a they, Chinese person. Chinese person dressed up as a black woman. It's a Chinese man, isn't it? A man, yeah. Yeah, um, with blackface on and... <laughs> And it's just a puff piece. The the worst part about this is a puff piece about how thankful Africa should be for China investing in their continent. Yeah, it's like see because they they're getting the person in blackface to say I love China. China's great, mm. you know. But it's actually a Chinese person dressed yeah. up as a black person saying this. You know what I mean? Um, they have a black woman over there. Why couldn't they get an actual? Black then they person? have like a black person dressed up as a monkey. Yeah. I mean, like seriously. Another thing you have to notice is this is the New Year's Gala. This is you know you've this got is Beijing. Beijing, you got the president, you got all the, the people out there. Mm. Um, a more recent thing, okay, is Kobe Bryant died. Mm. Okay, we all know that, mm -hmm. in a tragic helicopter crash. And immediately on Chinese social media, um, I'm going to leave it. Anyone who's Chinese can read what's going on in the background here. Okay, but we're going to give you a little bit of a, a gist of what's being said in these comments. But you've basically got people like this saying, die, N-word, die, I hope you're dead, don't kid around because i bought your shoes and if you told me you, you damn n-word if you told me that you would die so soon i would have bought more because now they're worth more right. and other people are like please tell me this n-word's really dead he's dead right you know because now my shoes are worth more that kind of thing it's absolutely disgusting the blatant racism that's there and please guys remember this is a public you know, mm. WeChat accounts. These are public people that sell shoes and stuff. It's kind of like if you went on Facebook Marketplace and mm. people were, you know, using all this N-word stuff, you know, to, to talk about Kobe Bryant. Oh, this damn N-word, you know, I got but you some can, shoes. If you post it on these same forums, anything about critical of the Chinese government, you will be removed. They have the power to remove any posts like that. But this is flourishing. Absolutely. It's totally fine. Si ba. You know, it's like die N-word, die I, I beg you, die, you know? What the hell kind of shit is this, China? This kind of racism that we're seeing here is blatant. It's something that the Western world doesn't seem to understand about China. Is that China, like, the society has a, a sickness and mm. it's this built-in acceptance of this kind of racism. You know? No, I, I need to justify it for a second here. Okay, okay, go for it, go for it. Not justifying racism, but justifying the fact that there has been a period of isolation where China would have racist tendencies in society because it was never condemned, right? Yeah. And they've been cut off from the rest of the world, so curiosity is one thing, mm -hmm. maybe shunning a different race because they look too different from you. Yeah. I can understand why that would happen in such a closed-off communist country. Yeah. The problem is, is that the government hasn't done anything in their almighty power to actually stop that part of society. No, they're not. They're That's not the problem. They're not stopping it. They let it continue. Do you think any one of these people that were saying die, inward die, got any kind of trouble? Probably not. I mean, maybe they got some people leaving nasty comments. Well, definitely people saying defending. Like, oh, a lot of Kobe I, fans. Yeah, of China. course. Man, China, all my Chinese friends love Kobe. Basketball. I've got several Chinese friends who chose Kobe as their English yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you'll get some people saying, like, how dare you say that? But these people are not losing their jobs. Nope. These people are not being taken to task. They're There's, not getting their comments removed. No, nope, it just gets to stay up. You know what I mean? That's the issue. That's the issue. And that's why... Um, you know, they get away with doing things like no blacks allowed in the McDonald's or no blacks allowed into hotels or no blacks allowed to stay here. You've got ridiculous things where landlords are, had kicked out legal, legal Africans. Hmm. So they've already paid six months of their rent or they paid three months of their rent or whatever it is. They paid, they're 100% legal on their work visas or on whatever visas. Hmm. And the landlords are like, you're African, get out. Contracts hmm. don't mean shit. Just kick them out and hmm. they get the police to come get them out and stuff. It's absolutely ridiculous. But this hasn't gone unnoticed. Um, here we have the uh, former from the African Union, I think the form, for, former uh, consular to the US or something. Hmm. Uh, let's see what she has to say. As we speak, President Xi, may I remind you 
that we have over 10 million Chinese residing in Africa where we have welcomed them with open arms. We have allowed the Chinese to establish themselves to marry Africans and live happily ever after in our Africa. Why can't Africans be awarded the same welcome that we have given to millions of your citizens? What is being done to Africans in China is deplorable and the world cannot stand by and allow it to continue. Yeah, um, and I'm 100% with her. I think everyone is. Like, seriously, that, that's something... All the apologists and people trying to say, oh, it's not a big deal or whatever, it is a big deal, mm. okay? And Africa has noticed, and even though Africa has, like, the... They're probably the biggest China apologists at the moment, many mm. African countries, because of the Belt and Road Initiative. Yeah, and the leadership, the corrupted ba leadership. Bait and Rob Bait Initiative. And initiative. Um, the corrupt leadership, they love China because of the money. But as an African myself, I, I remember very starkly when South Africa signed this big trade agreement mm. with China. I thought, well, you know what? Maybe they'll ease up the visa restrictions a little bit because it's so unfair when all of my sort of developed country friends from Australia or wherever, they just go get a visa. It's no big deal. They can get like a 10-year tourist visa. You know, business visa is easy to get. Their work visas is a much easier process. But for me, the maximum tourist visa I could get is a 15-day tourist visa, okay, because I'm a South African. And I would go to the same agent that they go mm. to. Things like that. I was like, okay, listen, they've signed this all up, so hopefully things will ease up a bit because now it's strong relations, mm. right? Nope, not at all. In fact, they just made it harder and harder. They made it, oh, you're South African. You're not a native... Uh, speaking country anymore. We're going to take you off the English native speaking country list. They start to implement more and more harsh regulations against Africans. And I thought to myself, where is this I scratch your back, you scratch mine mm, kind of thing? Because yeah. you see this with America all the time. Mm. Every single time America changes a visa policy or something uh, for Chinese, then China does it, mm. you know, for US people. Back and forth. It's like a tit for tat thing. Sometimes positive, mostly negative. But that's that's one thing I couldn't understand is there are so many Chinese people in Africa right now investing, pillaging, plundering, doing whatever they do, you know, setting up infrastructure. And most of them are state-sponsored. That's yeah. the thing. It's these huge mega projects the CCP yeah. is paying for. And and yet they complain. And you see the, the Chinese internet explode with this racism saying there are too many Africans mm. in, in uh, Guangzhou. There's only something like, what, 13,000 in total or something, 4,000 something. It's not even that many. I think it's quite a bit higher. Than well, that. I mean, it's, I know it's higher, but mm. like of the ones that have like been tested and sure, stuff, sure, they're, yeah. they're talking right, about the numbers. Right. Certainly not 10 million. No, no. I remember, no. I remember the peak of the African community was some years back. I remember reading it reached about 100,000 mm. in Guangzhou, mm. but it's been steadily declining massively because of New visa regulations, deportations, all sorts of deportations, crackdowns on um, Africans. Mm. It's been a long going thing. The African right. community has suffered huge amounts of racism in Guangzhou and What's in the, China. The CCP wants Africa, but yeah. they don't want Africans. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. want the land. Yeah. They want the resources. Yeah. They'll go there and they'll do what they want. It's and... colonialism. Yeah, neo colonialism. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's... that was our big topic. Kind of a big topic. I mean, the, the, what else we what else we got? Oh yeah, um, that's for uh, the end. Yeah, that'll be at the end. Mm -hmm. All right, it's kind of related, but I suppose. What do you think? End now? Maybe now? Okay, go for okay. it. Okay, sorry. Uh, one more thing though. Apparently, I want you to hate show. super chats. I don't hate super. We're gonna have a massive Q and A today. Joking. Okay, we have to, guys. One of the things that sparked off this whole anti. African anti-black thing mm. was the report of an alleged alleged assault. We still haven't seen the footage. Mm, waiting for that. Yeah, we're waiting for it. But apparently, a Nigerian man didn't want to take the quarantine test. Okay. The COVID test. The yeah. COVID test. Sorry. Um, and be put into quarantine. So he bit a nurse. He attacked and bit a nurse. Mike Tyson style. Yeah. Um, now, whether it's true or not, we cannot confirm or deny. Very possibly true. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yet. Yeah, but we haven't seen any footage. The fact of the matter is. Africans are being harassed. Foreigners are being harassed a big time in comparison to Chinese people. When you go into these places like a restaurant, they just let Chinese people in, even without checking their QR mm. codes and, or checking anything. I've seen the footage. I've got friends on the ground who've told me this. You'll see tomorrow in my video, actual video footage of people showing and telling this. They don't check the Chinese people, but they check the foreigners and they double check the foreigners and they deny the foreigners. And so 
obviously people are getting frustrated with this treatment. And I'm, I'm guessing that's probably what led to this is the constant harassment because mm-hmm. it is just harassment all the time. Not that I'm making excuses for any kind of physical violence because that's just off the table. Should never be, we should never reach that level. Thing is, as I've reported before, doctors are murdered all the time in China by Chinese people mm-hmm. who are disgruntled. Okay? Yet we don't see massive action being taken against groups of Chinese people. You know, what if a man from, I don't know, Sichuan or something beat up a nurse and and, uh, bit her face? You don't see the Chinese government putting out a... They're not going to say all people from Sichuan are not allowed to stay in hotels now. Absolutely not, no. You know what I mean? But just to drive this point home, we have a clip, which happened very recently, as you can see, the 10th. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what, six days ago? Um, And this is in a pharmacy. And what's happening here is this woman wants to buy some fever medication Mm -hmm. over the counter, but the nurse is saying that she's not allowed to without a prescription. So what happens? Let's take a quick look. Let's give it a rolling commentary here. I believe it it was a controlled substance. Yeah. So she picks up the box, threatens to throw it at the nurse. Um, Nurse is calm. Clearly agitated. There's a guy, by the way, just watching this. Oh. You know, on the left there. Right, right, So the right. nurse, she tried to walk out with the medicine. The nurse says, no, you can't. So what does the woman she do? She gets kicked. She gets kicks the nurse, the beats the nurse, you know, punches the nurse. Yeah, what else are you going to do? Yeah, keeps punching, kicks the nurse into the corner. You know, the the guy, by the way, absolute coward, doesn't step in. But this is a poison of Chinese society that I've well, spoken Especially about. that generation. So she hits the nurse with the umbrella a few times. She comes back again. What she got now? She's got some kind of a... I don't even know what it's that like is. A, like it's a, like a computer mouse. Or, oh, it's oh, like an electrical cord, the outlet thing. Yeah, and yeah. she's like using it like a flail to basically whip this nurse. This poor little nurse. She's probably in her 20s. She's mm. tiny. She's skinny. She's got this lost generation yeah. woman. And so she runs outside her. to escape this constant assault. Um, and what's happening? Well, guess what? Tons of people standing on the road. Look at this evil uncle walking past. Not a single person is helping her out. Nope. Okay. This woman just continues to wail on her the whole time. And uh, it's just absolutely disgusting. This is the Red Guard generation we're talking about. Yeah. Look at this evil uncle standing with his hands behind, just watching this as if it's the most entertaining thing he's seen all all day. That is the evil uncle pose. Yeah. So they just keep fast forwarding. Finally, a traffic cop walks up and says, you know, like, what what the hell's Mm -hmm. going on here? Okay. This happens in China, but where's the massive outrage towards that woman? Mm -hmm. Okay, what what's going on here? An African guy does something like that and all of a sudden all Africans are banned? That's the thing. Altercations happen in every country around the world, right? Mm -hmm. This would probably make American news, right? Sure. If it happened. However, it wouldn't become a race issue. No. China's made it into a race issue after claiming that they don't have a racist government or racist principles and racism doesn't exist. They make it into a racist issue. Absolutely. For their benefit. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely freaking disgusting. Um, this, it's just, the reason I showed that clip is to show the hypocrisy. Yeah. Of why everyone is now justifying the fact that this racism exists because one Nigerian guy attacked a nurse. Allegedly. Okay? Allegedly. We still don't know. Yet we see footage of Chinese people attacking nurses all the time and killing doctors and mm. stuff. Why isn't that brought up in the same breath? It's the same kind of thing. And why don't we see massive action being taken against groups of people based on that? Or uh, like, you know, changing the medical system so doctors aren't completely underpaid, have to rely on bribes, and then educating the populace that medicine is not magic and that you're not always going to get cured. By the way, that uh, clip was taken in Dongguan, Mm -hmm. which is stones throw away from Guangzhou where this all racist crap is happening. So it's in the same area as well. Right. You know what I mean? So mm. it's, uh, it's, it's some food for thought. Let's hit a couple of super chats and we'll move on to our Guanxi corner. Sweet. Sorry, guys. This is close to home. You know, I thought that this kind of racism crap was done. I'm seeing with. in the comments. Everyone's on our side. Don't worry. <laughs> it's, um, you know, I grew up during the abolishment of, of apartheid. You know, 1994 is when Mandela took over. And as I was growing up, uh, it had already been abolished. I went to school with black people. I was in the, like, when I was young, I uh, went to a Montessori school, mm. which was co-ed. Uh, sorry, not co-ed. What do you call that? Like, COVID. I don't even know how to say it. Multiracial, you yeah. know? So there was no restrictions. There was not. There was none of this no blacks allowed crap, no. even though it was still going on when I was younger. Right. By the time I hit high school, it had all completely disappeared. Mm-hmm. And I grew up with 
lots of black people mm. and you know we saw the end of this we saw the end of this thing happen we saw the international pressure and this is what gets me the most it's the same people out there who are screaming free mandela down with apartheid and all of that kind of stuff where are they now they forced change they forced change in south africa they forced the government to end apartheid through sanctions through constantly condemning it by you know preventing uh you know south africa from joining international mm. sports tournaments from you know any kind of trade with south africa had to be blocked off that kind of crap and guess what it worked mm. the racism well the, the apartheid the, the racist um apartheid regime got toppled it got changed up mandela took over the anc took over uh, the country's a complete mess but it was a mess before you know what i'm saying is actual change happened through international pressure so where's that happening yeah now? why do we not see the same international pressure being put on china they are blatantly no blacks allowed chinese only zones may as well have signs up saying chinese only mm. you know kind of like whites only or whatever because that's oh sorry no foreigners allowed no foreigners allowed to stay in this hotel why don't we just see a chinese only sign stuck everywhere well, the, chi the chinese government has to start treating foreign residents in their own country that are especially illegal ones yeah treat them like western governments are treating like chinese citizens in their respective countries as well yeah because they're not and treat there needs to be put pressure treat them with all the the rights and dignity that right. they deserve just like uh, most civilized societies would Correct. anyway let's put that international pressure on them guys it's time it's time for us to overthrow the apartheid government of the ccp uh, anyway, let's uh, get those super chats. Uh, Johnny B, best wishes to all those who've been affected. Thank you. Mm. Tim O'Donnell, keep up the great work. Thank you. BLB, it's my favorite dudes. Glad you guys are staying safe during these times. Let's have a great podcast. Thanks. Um, is this a Taiwanese flag? It looks like it could be. That's fantastic. In your experience from others, what kinds of attackers other than online would somebody with a YouTube channel talking about China in an objective way, including criticism, have to face? I'm in Europe. Uh, well, we've had doxing. We've mm. had um, our wives and families mm. kind of being attacked. The you know their bosses and stuff being approached. Mm -hmm. A huge campaign because don't forget when they can't physically attack you, um, if they can't figure out where where you are, they will go after your family. They will mm. try their best to destroy mm. your life. They sent emails to who they thought was my employer to mm -hmm. say I'm a racist and I'm a this and I'm a that and all sorts of crap to try and get me fired. Of course, I work for myself. We work for ourselves. I got a tasty email yesterday that I'll be covering on my channel. Oh, it's super funny. Um, they tried to catfish me, remember? Mm -hmm. Last week or whatever. They yeah, tried, yeah, they tried yeah. to find out where I am. It's the funniest uh -huh. thing ever. I'm, that's that's they a video. They might still follow through. Why yeah, not? We'll, 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 we'll see about that. It's, it's hilarious. Mm. Um, so the danger you face is you face losing your job, you face losing uh, friends, you face um, your reputation being besmirched by this very dedicated base. Dude, mm. it's hilarious. They set up a, a hate website against me. Mm, they did. And it's the funniest thing I've ever read in my life. I love it. I, I can't wait for the updates every time because it's just so mind-numbingly stupid. <laughs> I know. It's pretty... That when you read it... <laughs> it's like... You know, my favorite part about this hate website is they... Um, they say that I endorse napalm attacks against Asian <laughs> countries because when remember I posted the pictures of, right. I mean the video footage of those disgusting truck stop bathrooms and somebody said those truck stop bathrooms need to be napalmed right. and I love the comment because yes they're so disgusting the only way to get rid of them is it's to napalm fire, them. Yeah. so they make like these huge long articles about how I endorse napalm attacks against Asian it's countries. It's like the lengths that they go to to discredit um, us. It's yeah. crazy. So, I mean, you, you, if you become notable as someone who criticizes or speaks against um, any of these people, it, mm. it's going to be like a, a co constant battle with mm. fools. You'll, you'll have to suffer fools. You'll have to ignore a lot. Yeah, and you'll have to be very careful when you upload your videos like we do. Mm to make sure that you don't reveal any information as mm. to where you live, mm. no license plates, no addresses, mm. no street scenes near your house. Um, make sure you don't have a package in the background that mm. somebody can see a label on, you know, that kind of thing. Just just use vigilance. Yes. Yeah. Christina Youngren, have you seen uh, the many videos on Twitter of fires at factories and other businesses in China? Is that common or potentially for insurance? I know exactly what you're talking about. There are hundreds of videos of businesses mm. on fire right now. Most of my Chinese friends think that it's for insurance purposes because they have lost all their money on their investment and they'll get uh, eviction notices that they have to pay a certain amount for their rent and the money they owe from their investors because yeah. it's been taken a small claims court. So they'll set their business on fire to just claim insurance money to pay it back. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, Outage Monkeys, thank you for all your content. I appreciate both of your insight and the fact that you are so vocal about the difference between CCP and Chinese people. Yeah. I hope I can visit uh, China someday if things improved. We do mm -hmm. as well. 
Matthew Smart, the CCP stripped me of my only source of income. Uh, but I have a donation anyway because uh, a key part of the Anzac spirit is mateship. Uh, look out for each other, uh, one another, and this Anzac spirit is in every true Aussie. Keep it up, lads. I'm not sure what Anzac means. No, neither do I. So well, I can't. I, I don't know what, what we should say about Anzac. I don't but, know if uh, I can we, endorse this we, Anzac. Is it Prozac? Do, <laughs> I don't know. An Animal National Zoo Association I, I Corporation? Can, I can get behind that. <laughs> but no, thank you, mate. Like The, the sentiment is fantastic. Yes. Mm. Dadan, did you see the Al Jazeera interview where Deng Xiaoping's former translator was directly asked and embarrassingly avoiding questions about racism against Africans? Uh, no. I didn't see that yet. No. We'll definitely look that no. up. No. Uh, Josema, welcome back. How's strict is lockdown in california here in spain it's complete lockdown for more than a month only essential workers stay safe and stay awesome it's pretty strict it's strict but it's up to the people's discretion what we've yeah. noticed in la is that most people have been really good about it yeah you don't see too many people outside and if they are they're really far apart and i yeah. do see people wearing masks yeah which is um, great gloves. so you do see joggers out there mm -hmm. um I don't know how you can jog with a mask on. It must be awful. It's got to be brutal. Yeah, but you got joggers out there. You got people walking their kids or riding their bicycles, mm -hmm. but they do observe social distancing, so they keep away from each other. And mm -hmm. it's not like in China or other um, very crowded nations. You can get get by mm -hmm. without coming into contact with mm -hmm. people. And of course, the way less cars on the road. Some people, of course, still go to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, essential workers especially have to. Yeah. And th that's the beauty of cars, like I've said mm -hmm. before, is you have that social distancing. You're in a car. You can close all your windows. You can put the air recirculation on. You don't need to worry about catching it by driving around. You know what I heard? They, they're thinking about bringing back drive-in theaters. Isn't that, that a great a, idea? That'd be awesome. I love drive-in theaters. Yeah, like, I miss that stuff. When I was a kid. Yeah. yeah, and you put that little thing on your window. Well, mm -hmm. you can tune your you radio. You can tune your radio yeah. now. But, I mean, like, just the idea of going to the drive-in is awesome. That sounds cool. Yeah. Anyway. Henrik, hi from Denmark. Stay safe. Thank you, Henrik. George, President Trump is going to cancel funding to WHO. Do you guys believe this is the best way to reform the WHO and eradicate the corrupt influence of the CCP, or is there a better way? It's the best way. It's Get rid of the WHO. At least force them into change. Well, not, the WHO has done amazing things historically. Yeah, but like, not now. No, it, but right now it's so corrupted and poisoned at the top leadership that, that there needs to be reform there. So don't get rid of the WHO. Reform it to its core yeah. and take horrific dictatorships out of the leading positions. Yeah. Simple as that. Look, the thing is, you can say it is what it is, but it doesn't matter. If something has evolved into something so poisonous and corrupt and full It needs of, to be reformed. Yeah, it just needs to either be disbanded or completely reformed. You know, and I think cutting off funding is the first step because now they can say, hang on a second, because they've been just laying back, getting the funding, mm. thinking everything's fine and they, they can they can do whatever they want with impunity. But you've got to realize that there are consequences to your actions when you favor one country over all other countries. The other countries, especially the ones giving you the majority of your funding, are going to say, hang on a second. It's You're supposed to be, you know, there for everyone. Treat everyone equally. That's why we fund you, because we believe that what you're doing is a good service. But they believe the bad guy and allowed everybody in the world to be affected by it yes. because of their hidden censorship. And they censorship. kept pushing the narrative that things are okay right. and that it's not a global emergency. It's not a pandemic. Don't stop trade with China. Don't stop travel because it's going to be bad for the Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be discriminatory, blah, blah, blah. Now, when everyone is affected, they've got a lot of fire and brimstone towards other countries. Oh, you wasted your time. You didn't do this. Oh, you're treating this bad. You're not doing a good job, etc., etc. Don't do this. Warning you this. Didn't do that with China. Right. You know? right. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Kick out the WHO. Kick out the UN. Let's create new systems. Let's get the all the, the countries that actually want to work together for the well-being of humankind to sit together and create their own new systems organizations like the WHO, but minus the shit ones, you know? Yeah. The minus the people that, that are out there to the, the countries that have got dictatorships, the countries that are locked in civil war, the countries that are out there to, um, you know, cheat the world should be removed from these. If you're harming your own citizens yeah. to have political power over your entire nation, you probably shouldn't be an organization that's supposed to be altruistic. Yeah. It doesn't make course. sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Anyway. Lissa, very generous. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your coverage and expanding my knowledge of a world I was unfamiliar with. Winston, please get Animal Crossing for your wife. Sea milk, um, get some beer. <laughs> and maybe share one or two with Winston. Hey, uh, stay healthy and take care. Thanks, Lissa. Thank you. Super appreciate I also have a Switch. Yeah. Um, I might try Animal Crossing at some point. Everyone's going crazy about it. Final Fantasy VII Remake's a bit more important right now. Yeah, that's what we're playing. Uh, Lola Pop, Candy Ninja. I discovered you guys when I needed... Uh, 
to help acclimate a number of Chinese children from Chongqing into my preschool class in a small city of uh, in Illinois and understand their culture and what it was like for them and their families back home. Thank you. That's awesome. That's I'm really happy to help. Thank you. Uh, Joe Graves. Hey guys, I wonder, or sorry, I value what you do and I'm tired of being a freeloader. So you deserve this. Thank you. That's wow, a lot. Wow, that's Appreciate incredibly it. generous. Thank you so much. Is it bad that I have violent fantasies about CCB leaders? Join the club, man. Join the club. <laughs> Thank you. So sorry, JPN. Oh, who's the racist now? SJW's crickets. Well, you know, that's that's the unfortunate narrative that's going around mm. is it's this this what's happening in China. If you try to say it's anything other than racism, you're deluded. Well, it's just immoral. Uh, yeah, but it, it's actual racism. That and is actual racism. It's, it's not like, oh, someone hurt my feelings by calling me a name. No. This is actual, you are black, you may not enter. You are right. black, you are getting kicked out. You are black, you are being forced into quarantine. You are black, you are not welcome. This is racism. This is not like someone going and saying, oh, these people do this or these people do that. It's a completely different thing. It's not like some hurtful words. It's actual hurtful stuff that people Actions. end up on the actual street without being able to buy food from restaurants because nobody will sell to them. This is racism. And if we don't call it out as actual racism, then the world has gone absolutely crazy. You cannot make excuses for this. There is no excuse. But this isn't called racism at a state level. You know what is? Taiwan is racist because mm -hmm. they criticize an institution. Yeah, you call it the Chinese virus, you're racist. But... If they say no blacks allowed and kick blacks out onto that's the fine. street. That's fine. That's not racist. That's just China. They, Dude, they're oh, their rules. It's their rules. It's their country. It's their rules. Bullshit. It's racism. And if you if you try any excuses and if you try to justify this, it means that you yourself are a racist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Agreed. Because you have a racial preference. You think that Chinese people are better. You know, they're allowed to do this where other people aren't. You think that uh, the Chinese people have the right to be racist. It means that you're racist. Stop. Agreed. Uh, Jan. Hi, Winston Seamilk. Our EF senior teacher, a black USA girl, wasn't allowed to teach demo lessons, though she was there for three years. Can foreigners who worked in China like you both get a government pension when you are old? We cannot. No, not from China. No, no that's for certain. No. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that. Black teachers get so much shit. It's, it's awful. And you know what? Like, I've had a lot of black colleagues when I was working mm. in China, especially in training centers. Me too. And they would receive a much lower salary. And yeah. it's not like it's a secret. It's an open. They're mm. like, oh, you're black. You get 8,000 RMB. You're white. You get like 12,000 right. RMB. That's the way it goes. Right. And they have no choice. No. They just have to put up with this, uh, this racist crap. That's another reason why, you know, in China, you have to attach a photo with a resume. Yep. And if you're black, unfortunately, you're going to get denied the majority of the time. Yeah, you're going to have to hunt around. Yeah. Sean, you actually have to look for job postings that say black, okay. Yeah. I'm not joking. That's they say how, Obama how skin, okay. Obama skin, okay. <laughs> Chocolate skin, yeah. okay. Yeah. Sean, thank you. Loopy Alchemist, does uh, Winston have any plans to ship his Chinese car to the U.S. and fix it up <laughs> on a worthless website? No. no. Why would we want to do no, that? No, that car, that car has gone to the elements. There's I'm no afraid. nostalgia with a piece of crap. Yeah, and it's the first... In fact, it's the only car I ever bought brand new. Mm. Um, you know, I took the plastic off the seats and everything. Mm. And, you know, that was a big achievement for me to buy a brand new car. But at the same time, I'm sorry, but I just, I can't have any kind of attachment to that piece of crap. I bought my Suzuki Swift brand new in China. I have no attachment to that. I don't want to no. have that. I don't want to own it again. No, no. That one specifically. Yeah. What kind of a brand new car, the, the linkage for the gear lever snaps on the brand highway. New. Brand new car. The uh, aircon compressor five times. Five times. Broke. The, um, <laughs> when it was brand new, the window wouldn't go up and down on mm. the passenger side, the electric window. Brand new, by the way, just as I drove it off the lot. Uh, you know, etc., etc. There was a ton of things. Not a very good car. Don't buy Chinese cars. Don't buy a Chinese car. Yeah. Santee for coffee. Thank you. Stephen Kraft. Hi, Winston. C Milk. Uh, what about blacks, foreigners that are employed by these stores, restaurants, or hotels? Are they getting fired since they can't be on premises? McDonald's is a big multinational company. You don't get black people working at McDonald's in China. Remember, if you're a foreigner, you may not take up a menial position in no. China. It's not possible. You have to be a foreign expert yeah. or do trade. Yeah, so the, you, you're either... The blacks in China are all pretty much all traders. Yeah. If they're Western black, like African Americans, they're usually teachers. Yeah. It, de it really depends. But yes, the majority in Guangzhou are traders. Yeah. And that's what they do. They go into these big sort of uh, markets mm -hmm. where they buy oh. various different uh, knickknacks and sell them back to Africa. Uh, back to Africa. You know what the stupid thing is? Is that those big like markets are not allowing allowing foreigners in. Right. You watched our last podcast where our friend, uh, you know, Hollywood Life, 
He tried to walk in and they were like, no foreigners allowed. He even got his wife to talk. That was the, whole, those... the whole business yeah. is international textile trade. Yeah. And you're not allowing foreigners to, to get their products out. There. He's a Canadian. He's right. not even black. No. Black people are definitely not allowed and all foreigners are, are not yeah. allowed. So, you know, what's the point? Roswell. Thank man. So sad. Yes. Mm. Anthony St. Hillary, 420. Daniel Wilcox, <laughs> uh, Chinese people in China, in China are woke. They're fixing to overthrow the CCP. They are not. Nope. Um, it is a very small minority of people that would do anything. Yeah. Stephen Mitchell, keep up the good work, guys. Tomato gal. Uh, thank you. Ifan yeah. Pan. Uh, you guys, hey guys, I think we can all talk about how China sort of bought the supports of African nations with relatively open immigrant policies to them. With years of nationalism education, I think this is a long way coming. Absolutely. It was this idea that we're going to play buddy-buddy. We're going to be your, your pal. We're going to yeah. invest in your whole continent, infiltrate your political system, yeah. actually put Chinese militias there to protect yeah. their investment, and then say, actually, all the black people in China, nah, nah, nah. That doesn't benefit our national interests, you know. So you're right. It's awful. It's just so awful to see how Africa is treated and Africans right. are treated in China. Right. And like I said, I have firsthand, I have firsthand experience being a, a South African. Yes, I'm white. And because I'm white, I get away with a lot of things where my like black African yeah. friends and peers did not. But because my passport says African, I was visited by the police all the damn time. Right. They harassed the crap out of me right. while I lived in China. They come knock on my door at 11 at night midnight to check my papers mm. and while people like it never happened to you until much later right yeah yeah just yeah when it got really sensitive yeah but it happened to me from the beginning and mm. i just thought it was normal until i spoke to other nationalities and they're like no what are you talking about no, you're talking no. shit they're right. like no i've never been bothered by the chinese police i'm like mm. well it happens to me you know and this was before my youtube as well so sure. it's, people say that, people yeah. say oh it's because you make youtube no 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 because no. no. i'm african Mine was that yeah <laughs> The fact that I couldn't get visas where other people could get visas. You know, mm. that kind of crap. It's just, sure. um, Africans have a raw deal in China. They do. Magic Man, I was wondering if black people in China will take advantage of the racism situation by using racism towards black, like a black male for the CCP. Will that work? And how will the Chinese and CCP react? We already showed you that today. Mm. Um, they're just going to make the, not apologies. They're just going to show Chinese citizens being like, oh, we're still brothers. Yeah, let's a bunch give of you propaganda. some roses. Shaking hands like the doves of the peaceful integration. Of Where's China the and apology? Africa. There's no apology. No. They just said we we treat everyone equal. Here, have some it food and happen. roses. Now it, shut yeah, up. Yeah, here's some roses. Shut the, the hell up. We're being nice to you for the camera. Right. You know. Go exactly. Live on the street. Yep. John Funk, thank you. Chippicus, PRC stole Belt and Road from Sauron's plot from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when you guys come back upstate, try Omagong and Saranac. Yes, very good beers. Thanks, man. Uh, Ifan Pan sent a correction. Okay. Where is that? Holy crap, there's a lot, sorry. Um, by immigrants, I mean those who are state-sponsored visa, uh, like students, not individuals who try to apply for visas themselves. Those are always hard. L listen, don't forget, students have been hit hard by this too. Yeah. African students were also forced into mandatory quarantine and evicted from their dorms and stuff. This is, like I said, this whole um, crazy narrative that these are just illegal people being kicked out is not true. If you're African, it doesn't matter if you were studying, or if you're legitimately working, or you're there on business, or whatever it is, everybody got nailed by this. Mm. In different cities, they got nailed by this. Doesn't matter what nationality, as long as it's African, you got nailed by this. You right, know? right. Uh, Ultima Mike, everyone go to change.org, sign petition to get yeah. Tedros out. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's, that's done it. gaining, gaining it traction, yeah. Case closed 93, have you watched the movie Contagion? If so, how accurate is it, especially regarding China? If not, could you go watch it with this money? I have, but I, I haven't seen I'll it. have to look at it again to make the China connection. I haven't watched it. Maybe so. we can watch it this weekend. Yeah, yeah, we'll watch it. Jordan, uh, Laramore, have you all seen the Ch Thai China Twitter war? It is it's awesome. Hilarious. Without spoiling anything, I'll probably talk about that on Monday a little bit. It's yeah. just delicious and hilarious. Yeah, it's really funny. Uh, hey, Winston, Lawai, great podcast. Thanks, Simon. Uh, Lily Shen, thank you. Paul D, I'm sure China's focused on provoking racial attacks on Chinese people overseas all the time. Mm -hmm. So they get uh, all the researchers and engineers back to China for free before the war at South China Sea. When will the war start? I disagree with that. <laughs> that is not going to yeah, happen. I don't think that's a, th that's a thing. Um, but, you know, um, the, the one crazy thing about all this is China put out this whole idea that, you know, China is the safest place in the world right now. That's mm. their narrative at the moment. So they're denying any new, like any new um, infections and stuff that come up. They're being kind of hushed away. Um, of course, they've gone over the hump. They're not in mm. this like massive mm. peak like the rest of the world. Mm. We're catching up to them. But 
they made it seem like it's the safest place in the world. So what happens is all the foreign students, the Chinese mm. that are studying overseas right. and so on, they all rush back to China because it's the you know safe place to be. And they're the ones that brought back most of the infections, 90% of the infections. Yeah, and when they arrive, they yeah. get called virus smugglers. Yes, yeah. but you know what's even Ugh. more crazy about this whole situation about people blaming foreigners for this disease is that foreigners have not allowed, been allowed to go back into China since the 28th, you know? Yet they're doing all this quarantine stuff for people that haven't even left yes that haven't left people that have been there so they still want to blame the spread of any new infections Mm. and stuff on foreigners as if foreigners are still bringing it in whereas foreigners have been banned from entering china right since the 28th right we're on the 16th today Mm. you know that's more than a 14-day quarantine that you're supposed to have doing it retroactively yeah so it's still a useful tool for them to blame mm. foreigners for the, the spread of the virus, which right. is ridiculous because they banned all foreigners from entering. Right. You know, That's anyway. Another, another thing. Why they are not blaming the Chinese people that came in and putting a ban on them or something or forcing them like, oh, you're an overseas student, you know, oh, ha- hang on a second. You studied overseas this year or in your entire life. You studied overseas. You must also be a carrier. So let's throw you away. It's like that because it's the people have been in China for years who haven't left, who are African, are being thrown into quarantine. Correct. So why don't they do that with any Chinese person who's ever left China ever? You know? Same logic. Yeah. Victor, you guys think about being on Jimmy Dore's show, a pretty good political show, but he needs to have his eyes open about the CCP. I don't know what that is, but thank you. A lot of people need their eyes open about the CCP. Everyone follows their bullshit. Well, a lot of people do. Lily Shen, our audience certainly does. No, no, not you guys. You guys, present company excluded, of course. Except for the trolls that are... Yeah, of course. Mm. Lily Shen, do you guys know what the CCP is doing uh, nuclear tests in Xinjiang province? What do you think? Because this can be a huge disaster for the world. Um, Don't know for sure right now. I heard they were quite small. Mm. Uh, Gemini is 48. Anzac is the Australian New Zealand Army Corps. Okay. Corps. Like like the SANDF, South African National Defense Force. Okay. Mm. Cool. Thank you. Dadan, do you think China's position on the world stage is weakening at all? I can only see their strength increasing, and it's concerning. There's two two schools of thought about yeah. that. Chinese soft power has made it so that a lot of people in certain populaces have been duped. It has duped the public, uh, the world organizations, to allow them in a high position, high seat. They have a lot of money to throw at these organizations. The problem is that reputation has changed quite a bit. Unfortunately, their positions are solidified in a lot of these organizations. So it doesn't matter if people are mad or changing their perspective about China. Yeah. You have to vote with your wallet at this point, sure. right? Like you have to actually just not be doing trade mm. with an authoritarian dictatorship if you want to make change. I, I think so. Just like what the pizza guy said, if you right. guys uh, was, were around at that time, he said principles over profit. And that is very important. We're in a situation now where people have been turning a blind eye to human rights travesties, these disgusting things that have been happening in China for mm. years and years, decades, decades. Right, right. Willing to turn a blind eye in order to make some money. And Mm. greed has overpowered morals. And that's where things have gone terribly wrong. Nothing will change in China unless China, the CCP, has bought to task. Right. We've got to put our foot down and say, hey, listen, you can't be a bloody racist like that. Mm. You can't be throwing like Muslims in concentration camps. You can't be like arbitrarily detaining anyone who says anything that you don't like. And then executing people like randomly. You can't be doing that if you want to do trade with us. No. And yet the whole world is like, guess what? We're going to do trade with them even though they do all these terrible things. Why don't you adopt the same bullshit thing that you did with South Africa that forced change? Sanctions. Do not trade. Do not allow them to participate in international sporting things. Stop every kind of thing until these very big issues change. China does that to Taiwan. Yeah, these are very big issues that we can all agree are, are bad, just like apartheid was bad. Why can't we all band together and say, China, we want to be your friend. We want to do business with you. We want everything, but you got to stop X, Y, Z first. That's mm. what happened with South Africa. Mm. Guess what? Apartheid was abolished and the South African economy opened up to the world. That is what should be done with China. But right now we're saying, that's okay, China. You can be as horrible as you want. Mm. You can implement the most disgusting things against minorities and against people within the borders of your country. That's okay. We'll still open our economies to you and let you walk all over us. That is where the world has gone wrong. Mm. There's no incentive for them to change at all. No. You know, and every time they get caught with their pants down, 
They throw up a smoke screen. Oh, no, it's not really like that. Right. And then everyone just somehow believes them. Right. You know? Right. It's super annoying. Uh, this guy, I can't mm -hmm. say your name. You guys should go on The Tonight Show, then Ellen, then you should host SNL, then you should be in Star Wars. Seriously, <laughs> WTF, go on those things. Yeah. We'll try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jamie, uh, keep going. You're doing a great job. Thanks. Thank you. Daniel P., uh, do you guys eat your apples and ears peeled or skin? Seeing the footage of meat handling in the market gives me gives a huge sense of irony. Always battling on my wife on not peeling the apples. Sea milk, uh, congrats on the coverage of your source of COVID video. Thank you, Daniel. Um, in China, most people peel their fruits. Yeah. yeah. In the U.S., we usually eat it with the peel. I eat, the, I eat with the skin. Me too. But obviously, I wash it first. Of course, but they they peel it for a reason in China. Yeah, yeah, they, they see. do. Yeah. Uh, Josh, you guys should do a Worthless Whips Motorcycle Edition. Stay awesome, dude. We definitely will in the future. Oh, yeah. Han Sounds W, good. my man, it's hard for a mainliner like myself to call out any issues about the government. After several quarrels with my dad, I know that for yeah. sure. Thanks. We Thanks understand your yeah. position. It's Hardest terrible. position to be it's in. It's terrible because you've got a lot to lose. That's unfortunately how they keep control. That's unfortunately why they are still in power is because they have convinced the entire nation the entire populace to be afraid to stand against them and they're because, in australia dude like yeah, even uh, then that's the thing is they know that they have the control over you because if you speak against them they'll go after your family if yeah. they can't if they can't just arbitrarily detain you they will go and harass your right. family and that stops people from taking it to the next level the thing is imagine just imagine for a minute that the entire population said screw it and at the same time went against the ccp mm. guess what that they wouldn't be able to say, well, we're going to, you know, detain mm. your family or whatever. What if your family stood with you and didn't try to convince you to not say anything, you know, that could potentially get everyone into trouble? Because brainwashing and stuff ours worked. I'm just saying, just, just imagine if everybody yeah. right. around China said, you know what? Fuck it. And they went and said something bad about Xi Jinping all at the same time. It would be impossible for them to stop it. No, it won't happen. It, it won't happen. But I'm just saying, just imagine... That'd be an amazing, um, amazing thing. Can only imagine. Sadez, uh, just to show a little support, of course. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Gen C, Japanese companies are leaving China. I hope other Western companies are leaving China. No money for CCP. My small donation to help your family. So yeah, to go back to the other one, mm. um, there are American companies are leaving China yeah. in droves. Mm. Japanese companies are getting incentivized to go back home to bring manufacturing back there. And this is, is how we can heal our trade, right? Mm -hmm. This is how we can heal natural trade that we've had with civil countries with civil governments yeah with reciprocity yeah and fair deals right mm -hmm. dustin new soft wumo topic of not arguing but derailing conversation and getting people into useless debate sneaky sneaky yeah that is a huge thing it's happening quite a bit on reddit yeah you'll well, see something totally unrelated and what will happen is the conversation will shift sure <laughs> you know what i mean sure uh Ecto Mason, is Seamilk okay? I heard he's down with a Cygnus. <laughs> yeah, nice. I'm always down with a Cygnus. There's still more of that coming. Mm. We've still got Cygnus stuff. Yeah. Uh, so if I want to make China-related content, I can choose between my life being destroyed or going full Gong Chan Dan Jiao. Gong Chan Dan Zhong. What am I saying? Yeah, Zhong. Zhong Chan Dan Jiao. Uh, yeah. They have so much influence in the West, it's scary. Have you read Stealth War? Um, yeah. It is scary, but it's, it's the right thing to do. Here's the thing. Um, you can always do what we used to do while we were still in China, and that is just avoid um, sensitive topics. Mm. If you want to cover things in China, you know, you, you can. There's a lot of positive things to talk about. Yeah, there are a lot of Europe. good things. I know you're in Europe, but I mean, if you wanted to discuss China, you could avoid the sensitive topics and get yeah. away with it. The thing is, you, you have to understand that once you start to criticize, especially the Chinese government in any way, you've, you've signed that waiver. You've kind of put yourself down that path of no return. You know. And thankfully, a huge chunk of people are joining us on that. Yeah. Because it's just insane. Mm. Uh, Mike, sorry, when honeymoon turns into Stockholm syndrome, yeah. Mike, uh, thank you, Mike. Love the new Worthless Whips video. Can't wait for more. Oh, we just yeah. put out a new one with our Corvettes. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, Corvettes. Next week will be another one about my Firebird. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, then we'll see. Infinite Loop, thank you. Uh, Ultima Mike, everyone go to change.org. Yeah, thank you for yes. reminding me. Get Tedros everyone. out. Dr. Tedros. Uh, UDC, Tedros. thank you. <laughs> Trumbull still saying, keep up the great work, guys. Thank and you. Dadan, thank you very much. And Fantastic. We didn't do our Guanxi Corner. Well, you know why? Why? Because we don't have one. We don't have one this no. week. It's not a big deal. We answered a billion questions. It's very true. There was true. some Guanxi in that corner. That's true. And, and, we, and guess what? We don't have anything for Worldview, do we? No, you played the clip. Early. I played the clip, yeah. yeah. I did play the clip, but... We're out of order today, but you know, it doesn't matter. We still had a lot of fun with you guys. Yeah, well, we wouldn't say fun. Guess what? Q&A? It's done. It's done. Yeah, Dude, we you just, just played all the... I just between... had to... Whoa! Falling into <laughs> yeah. the lake. Sorry, but, you know, sometimes you just got to go through the motions. Guys, thank you. In 
like so so much for listening to what we have to say it's it's very important because we get incredibly frustrated mm. and i'm um, sure you notice if you follow either of us on instagram mm. or you know if you follow our yeah, other channels too, yeah. you'll see that we're fighting against two different sides here we've got this massive disinformation campaign coming out of china from mm. the ccp and the hordes of loyal nationalists and useful idiots who are out there to try and um, attack us as people. Right. Not the message. Not our arguments. But us as people. So we get that on the one side. And then on the other side, we're fighting this ignorance in the Western world. It takes them so long, you know, for mainstream media or for people in general to start to cotton on to what's going on. I'm getting messages today from people saying, oh, have you seen this? And they show me, day, right? show me like a clip of the nurse in Wuhan saying that there's a ton of people infected or whatever. Right. It's like, dude, we've been talking about this stuff right. since day one. We've been the first people we were called out and told that we are exaggerating by all of the useful idiots attacked us for saying that this was a serious problem. When we went after the WHO on the 30th of January, I might add, that's a long time ago when we started to point out the WHO and its bullshit. My theory of the origins of yeah. COVID-19 were called unfounded. Yeah. And sure. then what? What does mainstream media do now? Well, they're running with that. Mm. And everything has been proven pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we're the first ones to do it. And that's not to toot your own horn. Yeah. What's to say is that, I, unfortunately, a lot of people out there need it validated by a higher figure after we've already talked about it. So thank you to the supporters yeah. that follow us and trust what we say. Because yeah. we know what we're talking about. Everybody out there who's been a part of all of this, this, yeah. this journey that we've been on, especially if you're an old subscriber, you'll know that what we're, what we're saying is genuine. Yeah. It's, it's stuff that we've seen. It's stuff we've experienced. It's stuff that we know. We would never go out there and try to spread disinformation. No. So we're incredibly happy that you guys have come along for this and uh, stuck with us. We've got a lot more to get through. And uh, these incredible tough times that everybody is going through... Remember that we're going to slog it through and we're going to come out the other side eventually. Mm. It's much harder for some. Some of us are losing loved ones along the way. Mm. Um, some of us are going stir crazy. Mm. Some of us are having relationship issues money because issues. of especially money and security issues. We don't know what's going to happen in the future because of this horrible thing that, uh, you know, let's just face it, the CCP has thrust upon the world. Um, but when we do come out of this at the other side we're going to come out stronger than before mm. and we're going to change things up a bit i think yeah. i think things are going to be changed and for the better it's going to be a hard tough change but i see some some positivity in the future and it's all up to us to stay informed at all times so that change can be meaningful absolutely let's uh, just keep everyone informed uh stay awesome guys we can't wait to see you don't forget tomorrow in my video i'm going to show some actual footage of uh, these forced quarantines and um, people that I know on the ground who are being affected by this racism and, um, you know, mm -hmm. this kind of anti-foreigner crap that's going around. And then, as usual, we have all our crap. Monday, we got another ADV China where we ride around and talk about a very um, uplifting uh, topic. You lift my spirits. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the rest of the week, you know, already. See you then, guys. And thank you very much. Stay awesome.